Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Ted Gardner, and I'm an interviewer for the uh, Library of Congress Oral History Project, which is so capably uh, run here at our Public Library of Cincinnati. And uh, today we have the honor and the pleasure of, of uh, interviewing Helen uh, Prophet from Cincinnati. And uh, we're just uh, so happy about this. Dennis Daly is our... Pollitt. 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 Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. I apologize. I was thinking uh, Pollitt rhymes with profit. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Pollitt. And uh, so Helen, uh, tell us about yourself. Where were you born? I was born here in Cincinnati, really in Cheviot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I grew up in the Western Hills area, went to Western Hills High School. What, what elementary school did you go to? Westwood. Westwood And elementary. Cheviot. Okay. And uh, after they built Cheviot School, I was out there. I see. So. Uh, and then Western I, Hills High. And Western Hills High. Very good. And I was in the choral group at Western Hills High. It was called an a cappella choir. Yes. And we did a lot of singing throughout Cincinnati for various occasions. Right. And I sang in the operas. And uh, in one of the operas, I had a small lead. Mm -hmm. But uh, music and I was, was very well acquainted with each other. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> It's after, a wonderful part of one's life. Oh, yes. Music. Yes. Absolutely. So after I graduated from high school, I went to <laughs> a long gone company called Contometer School. Mm. It's an editing machine, but there's no tape. Mm -hmm. And you better get it right the first time or you do it over. <laughs> <laughs> and from there I went to uh, Cincinnati Milling Machine Tool Company. Oh, yes. And I worked there for eight years, and I advanced from filing to eventually I was doing payroll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, and the mill, as they called it, was such a wonderful place in those days. Oh, so important. Wonderful. So important to our nation's economy yes. and everything. It was a, a wartime factory. Right. And uh, we worked seven days a week. Hmm. And uh, one of the friends of mine that I worked with joined the Navy after her boyfriend was killed in Pearl Harbor. Oh my. So I just decided, huh, maybe I should do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to check it out. Well. Now, okay, now let's. At, at what age were you when you decided to go into the Navy? 28. 28? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or right. I guess I was 27. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I worked... Now that's that in itself is remarkable, see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at that age. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I loved it. Well, I uh, the recruiter that I had here in Cincinnati, when I got up to boot camp, at Hunter College, New York. She was up there and she said, oh, Helen, <laughs> you're gonna be in the singing platoon. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I spent one day in the kitchen scrubbing pots. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time I was singing. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's and marvelous. we went into New York and we sang at Helen Hayes' stage door Canteen. Oh, that famous place. It was, we were thrilled. We were going to the stage door canteen. When we got there, we were on the stage. All the soldiers were, and sailors were out in the audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we didn't get to mingle. <laughs> I'll bet some of them wish they could have mingled with you. <laughs> well, now, uh, 
before you got to uh, the stage door canteen, uh, when you went into boot camp, no, oh. when you went to the recruiter here in Cincinnati, oh, yes, what what did they say to you? Well, they asked me questions about what I like to do mm -hmm. and so forth. But uh, of course, the recruiter had me pegged already, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, the recruiter, uh, they said that I passed my physical so I could go. Sure. And I didn't tell my parents I was doing this mm -hmm. until I was accepted. Until you were locked in. Yes. <coughs> well, that, that too was a fairly common thing, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, a, yeah. lot of, a lot of people did that. And my mother said, why are you leaving a good paying job to take a monthly pay that's less than what you're making? <laughs> I said, I guess because I want to go someplace else besides Cincinnati. And you also felt a very yes. strong Urge. devotion to your country as yes. well. That, and, and Helen, wasn't that the, uh, the case, and we remember it so well, the spirit of the nation at that time. Right. Everybody. And everybody was involved. Right. And everybody. They wanted to help our country. Absolutely. Period. Absolutely. Yes, and that, that is so, that was so very, very strong then. And, um, well, we'll not talk about the comparisons between <laughs> then and, and today. Uh, because we want to hear more about your experiences. Now, when you went to uh, New York, did you uh, travel by train or bus train. or what? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We, that was um, an overnight trip. We boarded the train at the terminal. Union Station. And uh, I have a picture that was taken and put in the Enquirer oh. of three, I think it's three other ladies and mm -hmm. myself waiting to board the train. Oh, for heaven's sake. It's in my photo album. Now, were you all Navy? Or yes. Some, that was, all that was Navy. a Navy contingent. So we went, we had a layover overnight in Washington. Mm -hmm. And then we went on to New York. And somehow or other, they lost our luggage. Oh, well, <laughs> I was permitted to have a slight high heel in black. Mm -hmm. And I wore them. And I marched in them for four days. <laughs> oh, wow. Because your luggage was right. contained luggage the other. Right, luggage was lost. <laughs> and every night I was washing stuff out for the next day sure. to wear the next day. <laughs> so it was. Um, did you ever get your luggage back? Yes. Oh, you did. Oh, that's Finally, good. Finally, we got our luggage, <laughs> yes. Okay, so the, about 300 of you went, uh, went on that. I trip. guess it was that many. My but. goodness, that's marvelous. Well, now they... Uh, uh, of course, we slept in barracks. I guess it was dormitories. Mm -hmm. on At Hunter, Hunter's College. Uh, yes. Hunter and, College, uh, yeah. there were four of us in a room. Okay. Well, and, that... Uh, I've talked to other ladies who had similar experience. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Hunter College was the uh, Navy boot camp for, right. for women. And uh, so most people who went into the waves uh, uh -huh. went to Hunter College. Well, now when you were there at Hunter, um, what what did you uh, what did they start you out with as a way of of military uh, drill? Marching. Or any, anything <laughs> you marched in your low heels for se several days. <laughs> right, and uh, of course, as I said, I only spent one day in the kitchen scrubbing pots, <laughs> but. Uh, other than that, we did singing. Right. And uh, so you were entertainers. Yes. Right. Uh, and we broadcast from Hunter College. Oh boy. And uh, then when I got to, uh, well, I went to Milledgeville, Georgia, mm -hmm. after Hunter. Mm -hmm. That was storekeeper school. Right. Uh, and, before you left New York, and you're entertaining, did you meet any? Famous music people or anything like that? The only real famous one that I recall meeting was Helen Hayes. Oh, yes. 
She was and, a wonderful lady, too, oh, wasn't wonderful. she? wonderful. Right. Right. And uh, they took us to um, two chores restaurant oh, for yeah. lunch. Very famous. So place. that was an experience. Wow, I'll say. <laughs> and I had been to New York previously before I went into the Navy. Mm. So I knew something of New York, but not a lot. Right. Did you do? Uh, sight, but, did you have an opportunity to sightsee while you were there? We didn't have that much opportunity to sightsee because we were singing so much. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was fun, though. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed it. Oh, my goodness, yes. That's wonderful. Were you a soprano? Yes, sir. Right. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I'm a soprano. So when, 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 you, uh, when you got to the point of moving on from boot camp, how, how did they select you to go to store, storekeeper school? They did it on basis of what kind of work you did before you mm -hmm. went, when you entered the Navy right. or before you entered. And of course, I was in accounting, mm -hmm. so in payroll. So right. they sent me to storekeeper school. Sure, that's a natural fit. And we lived in uh, Milledgeville, Georgia which was the first capital of Georgia. Oh. And we lived in what was the former... Uh, oh. Governor? Governor's mansion. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it was an experience <laughs> living in <laughs> a former... And of course, the uh, Georgia's women's uh, college was there also. Mm -hmm. But we were not supposed to participate in anything they did or they with us. I see. And uh, it was uh, it was nice to be on a campus. Mm -hmm. It was only women, mm -hmm. women's college. Must have been a beautiful but, place. But uh, it was a beautiful yeah. spot. Yeah. And uh, on one weekend, I had the opportunity to go into Atlanta, where I spent uh, one night with a friend, mm -hmm. uh, parents of a young man mm -hmm. that I had dated in Cincinnati before. How about that? <laughs> yeah. That's nice. So that was interesting. Well, I should say. So well, well, you're... you're <laughs> Experience in the South must have been uh, sort of an eye opener as well. Yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Any funny was... stories or anything? <laughs> <laughs> you you didn't uh, mingle. Period. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you watched what how far on certain streets you walked. Mm hmm. And. Uh, I, the young man that I, parents that I visited, he was in college, he went to Georgia Tech, and he was in school at that oh, yes. time. And he became uh, an Air Force captain uh -huh. after he graduated from mm -hmm. college. So, uh, and I got to see him once after he was married and I was married. Mm -hmm. so. It was kind of a reunion. Sure. Meeting. Well, that's nice. But we were passing through yeah. uh, of Atlanta, so we right. stopped. Well, that's yeah. That's nice to have connections like that. Yeah. And, make, and those things stick with you for yeah. the rest of your well, life. Well, now while we were in Milledgeville, we had courses in Navy ship recognition, mm -hmm. Air Force net recognition. And, uh, oh, of course, accounting procedures. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was what I was interested in, right. of course. Right. And when I got ready to leave there, after they gave us quite a few tests, we had a choice of going to Cleveland, to the Bureau of Supplies and Accounts, or to, uh, 
uh, Mechanicsburg. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And uh, I had been told by somebody, I don't know who told me this, Mechanicsburg was just a small town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't think I wanted to go there. <laughs> so you went to the big city of Cleveland. Yes. <laughs> and that's where they sent me. Oh, good. And what kind of a outfit was that in Cleveland? Oh, Cleveland Supply, Bureau of Deport Supplies and Accounts was huge. Mm. And they had uh, the first um, oh, key punch and verification mm -hmm. system up there. And although I had done that at the mill, I didn't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> because those people, they worked their cells to death day and night. They mm -hmm. had three shifts of people wow, around the in clock. that area. I was fortunate in being selected to participate in a small office and we handled all the savings bonds for the entire Navy. Oh, wow. So that was interesting. Sure, you probably handled mine. <laughs> there were only four Navy people uh -huh. in the office. The officer was a Navy person, Navy officer. And there were, uh, the rest of us were just mm -hmm. enlisted people. Mm -hmm. And there were two civilians that worked with us. Right. So it was a small office and it was right around the corner from the building that we lived in. I so see. It was very convenient. Right. And uh, it, the uh, key punch and verification was across the street in a building. So there was a lot of personal, personals going up and down the street. Contact. As well so as forth. officers. Sure. And those poor officers, they got to work out on their arm because <laughs> Navy personnel was saluting them all. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> well, it must have been, and, and you're intermingling with people from all over the country. Right. And with your background in business, wow, that was very important. Yes. Um, I enjoyed my time in the Navy. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was, uh, it was an eye-opener to meet, as you say, all different types of people. You learn to cope with all <laughs> types, as well as blacks. Oh, yes. Colored people. Sure. And, and sometime uh, for the first time for many of us. Yes, that was a situation. Right. right. Cleveland was a very hospitable town. Mm -hmm. We rode the buses free, or streetcars, I should say. Mm -hmm. They would give us passes to all the theaters. Wow. The symphony, the uh, museums. We would be able to go to football games, baseball games, if we so desired. Sure. We could pick up tickets. Terrific. So it, as I say, they were, <laughs> when I came home the first time on a weekend pass, I got on a bus out in Kennedy Heights and I walked past the, the, fee, the fare box and the driver said, lady, you didn't pay. And I said, oh, I'm not in Cleveland. And he, said, and he says, it ain't Cleveland. What do you mean Cleveland? And I said, well, up there we don't have to pay that's if we're cute. in uniform. That's a cute story. Oh, that's cute. Well, yeah, you know, I guess I, uh, I was not in Cincinnati, but uh, I guess, you know, Cincinnati was not uh, that attuned uh, yes. to the military way of life and so forth like the other big cities. Well, um, the, uh, the work that you did with the key punch and everything, and of course, 
people today don't know what a key punch no. is, you know, that's... They don't know what a contaminator is. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that, that was high-tech stuff in oh, those yes. days. Right. You were, you were right on, on top of everything there. That was yeah. good. But I wanted out. <laughs> you did? It wasn't fun. It was boring. The verification was very boring. And, <laughs> oh, it was loud. Uh huh. I, I always said I wondered if I lost my hearing <laughs> <laughs> training for that. But uh, I was, uh, while I worked at uh, Cincinnati Milling, the mill, we had a choral group that performed around town. And I was in that group mm -hmm. at the mill. And I remember one time I came home on a weekend and uh, the conductor had approached me ahead of time. He said, we're gonna be singing down at the Friars Club. Do you think you can make it for that performance? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I'll be in town, yeah. Well, they did a song that I had done, had a solo in. Oh. So when that solo came up, I started to sing and walked on stage. And of course, they were always all surprised to see me. Of course. <laughs> in a uniform. What you know. a nice thing, I should say. Yeah, yeah. That, that's great. So that's, that was fun. Yeah. Well, you know, that brings up a subject, too, that I'm very, have always been deeply interested in because of my interest in music, and that was the songs, the songs that we sang in World War II. The yeah. songs, you know, the great ballads, and some of the hokey kind of funny yeah. songs and so forth. Did, in your singing group in the Navy, did you sing, um, did you sing modern song, up-to-date oh, yeah. songs? We sang. We uh, we had a quartet up in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the gal that was a recruiter in Cincinnati that I had, and she was up at Hunter College. When I got to Cleveland, she was up there. <laughs> <laughs> I walked in and I said, oh, for crying out loud, you're not here too. <laughs> She Gotta says, stop meeting oh, like this. Oh boy, she says, you're just what we need. We need a soprano. <laughs> so we broadcast from Cleveland Radio once a week for the oh, Navy. Oh, how nice. How wonderful. And we would go around and, and uh, I wonder entertain. If, I wonder if that went on over the uh, Armed Forces Radio I network. have no idea about that. I know it went on out over Cleveland, sure. but whether it went on the armed forces, well, I don't I'll know. bet you entertained people far and wide. That's I just, I guess that, I did. That's just and wonderful. it was fun. Sure, I think there's pictures in my album of the quartet. Good. Oh, that. And uh, well, Dennis will be very happy to look yeah, at that and, uh -huh. uh, and record those. Um, my daughter did the the album that I have there for my mm. 90th birthday. That's very, very nice. Yeah. Now, um, tell us about your family. Now, you had children. How many children? Yeah. Uh, I have five children. <coughs> mm -hmm. there are four girls and a boy. Wow. The boy is the oldest. Mm -hmm. And uh, my daughter that's here with me is my oldest daughter. Oh, that's, that's so nice. And I have uh, Are the others all in town? Yes. Wow. The one lives in Oxford. Mm -hmm. That's the furthest away. Oh, yeah. uh, Clara lives across the river in Fort Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have nine grandchildren and uh, seven great-grandchildren. Congratulations. My parents are both deceased. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sister and brother-in-law are deceased. I only had two sisters. One was a stepsister. I see. My father died. My natural father mm -hmm. died when I when he was forty-two. Oh dear! And um, so mother remarried, and she married a man from the church that we went to, mm -hmm. and he had a daughter. I see. So their birthdays were ten days apart. 
<laughs> Same age. <laughs> but it was uh, interesting. And she, it, both my sister and my stepsister are deceased, and mm -hmm. my brother-in-law is also. Well. I have a niece here in town and one niece in Florida. Oh. Well, that's such a nice family, and to think that uh, that um, uh, you're you're were you the only one in your family who served in the in the service during the war? Uh, my I had a stepson that was in the army, but he was in the Korean War. Oh, in Korea, I yeah. That was and, uh, a very very difficult time. He is. <laughs> my son-in-law was in, two son-in-laws were in the army, yeah. both of them <laughs> in the army. And uh, the one son-in-law is still alive. He will not talk about, they were in Vietnam. Vietnam. Yeah. Very he difficult will not period, talk about I know. It. Now, the other son-in-law, her husband, uh, he was involved with the Agent Orange. Oh dear. And uh, he is dead 10 years, 10 years now. Oh. And uh, so she has remarried. I guess he's a little longer than that. 12 years, I guess, now. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> she's remarried 10 mm -hmm. years. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've had uh, you've had very strong connections then uh, with other generations as well as right. your own. Uh, going back to your uh, way of service, uh, how long were you in uh, Cleveland? Twenty months. Twenty? Oh, no, oh. I was in the service for twenty months. Twenty months, yeah. Yeah. But you were in Cleveland for what about oh, less than a year? About a year. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little more longer than that. But and but and before that at Millage Milledgeville. Well, I was only there for three months. Three months. Yeah. Three months. And I think it was about three months that mm -hmm. I was in boot camp. Mm hmm So. Yeah, that's uh, about right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three mm -hmm. months, I remember. Yeah. Um, you made obviously with your wonderful personality and everything. You made lots of friends. Oh yeah, and particularly through your music, that is a, such a wonderful binding experience right. to have a mutual love, uh, you know, for music with other people. Um, did you make um, friends from other parts of the country, uh, people that you'd never known before? Oh yes, right. Uh -huh. Have you kept in touch with them? Or? Some of them, yeah. Uh -huh. The the last one that I was in touch with lived in uh, uh, outside of Cleveland. Uh -huh. And uh, she's in that f photo album. She was one of the flag bearers when we marched in Cleveland mm -hmm. at the end of the war. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. you got to be in the big parade, huh? Right. Good for you. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Many of us never, <laughs> I never got to <laughs> and anything. Before I even went into the service, uh, when I was at the mill, mm -hmm. I went to UC a couple of, two years at night, just taking subjects, you know. Right. But I became involved with the choir up there. At UC? Yes, an evening Good. choir. Wonderful. And I had been taking voice lessons from a lady whose husband was our choir director at Kennedy Heights Presbyterian mm -hmm. Church. Mm -hmm. So I became involved in that choral group up at UC. And uh, finally she said to me, Helen, I can't teach you anymore. I want you to go down to the college. Uh, Conservatory. Yeah. How about and, that? Uh, she said, I've talked to Louis John John, and he will take you as a student. Wonderful. So I went down there, and that's where I was taking voice lessons mm -hmm. when I enlisted in the Navy. Oh. 
And he said to me, you mean I'm going to lose you? And I said, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever go back after no. the war? No. Oh, okay. No. All right. <laughs> no, because I got married. Uh -huh. And uh, after the war was over, of course, you enlisted for the duration at That's that right. time. And when the war was over, I was mustered out and uh, I got married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, April the 6th, I would have been married. Um, how old's Gary? 50? 60? 52. 62. I would have been married 62 years. Oh, how so. about that? Um, have you had reunions, uh, Navy reunions, or anything like that since the war? I belong to Unit 72. Okay, now what is that? It's a wave unit. Oh, I wondered about that 72 number on your <laughs> cap there. Yes. Okay. There, we are about, we have about 40 ladies who are members. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our members are what are called members at large mm -hmm. with the Navy Wave Group. Right. And uh, they don't come to the monthly meetings. Mm -hmm. Now, this past Saturday, we had a meeting on Saturday. Normally, we meet on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. But we had one Saturday so that some of the members that can't come during the week right. could attend. Well, and that's right and here we, in Cincinnati? Yes. Wow. La Rose is out at White Oak Shopping Center. Oh, good. And uh, there were about 28 of us. Good. Well, that's great. Some, as I say, are members that sure. can't come during the week. Right. But we meet once a month for lunch, and we we have our unit has hosted a, a regional convention, and. Uh, Fortunately, we were able to make money at it. So our unit has been able to help with the Yellow Ribbon Program. Center okay. for Matt Mouthman. Right. right. And uh, we have helped with the scholarship fund as well as supplying stuff mm -hmm. for them to send overseas. Oh, that's very generous of you. Yeah. That's wonderful. We have ladies that work up at the Veterans Hospital. Yes. And uh, one of our members has just decided this year not to join us because she and her husband, she's in the Navy waves, and he was in the Coast Guard, and the two of them do, uh, when someone dies, um, veteran dies, yes. they go to the Military. cemetery and have play, he plays taps and she of course accompanies him. Right. So she says she's had so many funerals oh, she I doesn't know. have time for anything else. I know. But she was working with the uh, veterans resident home over in Fort Thomas. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was interesting too. Yes, I should say. Well, you know, <clears throat> this is, um, I, I find in my experience, and, and of course you've, you've expressed it so well, that people in that, in that period, that World War II period, had such a loyalty and such a feeling of comradeship. Yes. And, and it's wonderful to carry it on. I, I belong to several organizations here in town where we do that sort of thing as well. But the, um, I'm just fascinated by your music uh, experience. Now, when you went to, uh, went, went to UC to take vocal lessons. Well, I was just going to UC to take classes. Just, I see. I took English for one. And uh, another one was, uh, Oh. <laughs> drama. Drama. So okay. I took a class in drama. So it was uh, 
but I wasn't too thrilled with that. <laughs> <laughs> I was more interested in the music. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, the uh, with your with your wonderful experience uh, like that, uh, how how do you feel about uh, it affected the rest of your life, like your civilian life? How do you how does it affect my civilian yeah, life? Yeah. How did you did you feel that that the Navy experience strengthened you in your civilian life? Yes, I yeah. think so, yes. Right. I think I, it made me more able to be meet new people mm -hmm. and maybe even help some people. Right. Now, I am, have been connected with my church very much so, and I sang in the choir until about two years ago. And I left him a note one Sunday and said, I'm going to retire. And like Beverly Sills says, I'm going before you ask me to. <laughs> I know how you feel. I'm getting to that point myself. <laughs> so, but, so I don't sing in the choir anymore. Oh, but well. I have been held officers in the choir, in the church. Sure. I've been an elder and a couple of terms. I've been trustee a couple of terms. And at present, I am an elder again, but I am not too happy with the fact that our church is going to be merging with another Oh, church. that's always difficult. Yes. Gee, you know, uh, I know. I know it's best for the church because, uh -huh. as I told one of my daughters yesterday, there were only 25 in church yesterday for, for communion, and that's not good. I know. I... But uh, as time marches on, well, yes. You have to give and take. You have to be able to, you know. Yeah. And it's the same with my family. <laughs> I have my family. Fortunately, I have two daughters that are retired. From The one of them was a teacher, special ed teacher, and the other one worked for the city. Okay. And uh, she worked over at City Hall, <laughs> uh -huh. so she retired from there. Right. But they have helped me, and then my youngest daughter, <laughs> she takes care of all my <laughs> medical papers. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> she works as a, as a, well, she's an assistant in a, a podiatrist's oh. office. Oh, okay. So she knows how to handle well, I should medicine. say, well, that's very helpful. Yes. That's very helpful. Yeah. Well, your, you know, your experience and your um, love for life and everything, it, it comes out so beautifully, and I can see how you have affected many people throughout your life. And with your, your Unit 72 uh, activities and supporting yes. <clears throat> different uh, different uh, programs and so forth is is so very important, and of course uh, the Matt Maupin thing was such a terrible oh, yeah. tragedy, and now that it has been pretty much resolved, uh, will you be taking on some other project in your group? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I hope not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting to the point where I, I don't want to do anything anymore. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I guess I'm getting lazy. Well, no. You no, I wouldn't say that. I, you've given so much throughout your life. And uh, I know that you're, you know, number one, your family, of course, and your church and your community and your country are so grateful to you for yeah. what you have done. And it's well, I'm grateful for being able to live in a secure building 
there are only senior citizens in our, where there's two buildings with a courtyard in between. It's okay. called Symphony Square Apartments. Oh. And we're in Westwood. Okay, I don't know about that At the corner one. of Sheviet and Mozart Avenues. Okay. We're security locked. Sure. And all the people in my building are so, well, we get along well together. That's Let great. me put it that That's way. That's great. And yeah. I have a neighbor right next door to me. Every day she gets my mail for me. And little things like that yes. are yes. so important. Sure, self-supportive, yeah. you know, and that sort right. of thing. Well, that, that's just great, and it's so important at, uh, you know, at an advanced age. Uh, we say advanced, you know, whatever that means. But uh, I, I, I just think it's, it's just terrific what you have done and, and your, your contribution uh, through your, your love and your spirit and, uh, has been so important. And I'm, I'm sure that your family, of course, uh, yeah. respects that so much and so well. Uh, can you think of any funny stories, uh, you know, going back over your uh, period in the Navy? I know that there were so many funny things no. happened, you know, with people no. and people you were associated with. I don't think of anything. Okay. No. All right. I, uh, I, as I said, I truly enjoyed my time in the Navy. Right. And as I said, or you mentioned, you meet so many different people. Yes. And it's educational as well. Well, that, you know, that's, <clears throat> that's what I, I found to be the case in meeting, meeting people from all around the country and, uh, and uh, it, it's a broadening experience. Oh, yes. And it certainly uh, enriches your life. Right. And uh, you exhibit that so well. Thank now, you. you've got a number of other things on your cap. Do you want to tell us about some of those? Well, I have a pin on there, two pins uh -huh. for the Navy. Right. Which I am uh, on their computer. Uh -huh. I'm a member of the Navy. I have uh, one pin on there is because I was secretary of our unit. Oh, well, for that's good. Two different times. Uh huh. And uh, that's pinned this on there. Right. And uh, I'm a member of, I don't know whether you know what WIMSA is. It's the Navy as well as Army, Marine Corps, Coast Guard mm -hmm. women. Oh. N Memorial in Washington. Oh, yes, yes, And yes. it's right outside the gateway to, uh, what's the name? Arlington. Arlington. Yes. Right across and the river. it's called Wimsa. Yes, I have been aware of that. I've not seen it, though, but I... Yes. <coughs> and uh, I'm a member of that. Good. And I'm on the computer there. Mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. I'm also a member of uh, the Vietnam Memorial yes. Group. My daughter took me to Washington one time because she was going to participate in a Vietnam Memorial. Yes. And uh, we, she hired <laughs> through the concierge at the hotel, we got the hold of this man. He had a, a van and he would pick us up, mm -hmm. take us where we wanted to go, drop us off and say, I'll be back whenever you want me to come back right. and pick you up and take you someplace else, which he did. And to me, out of all the memorials, <laughs> I was most impressed with the Korean. Yes, I was too. Oh, didn't I, that just take your breath away? Uh, Those figures? Yes. 
Oh, I know. I I'm the same way. I I have told so many people that there there is there is nothing as impressive as that. Yeah. The the Marine Memorial across the river at Arlington, of course, the famous you know Iwo Jima flag yeah. raising right. uh, is impressive. Now the World War II Memorial. Have you seen that no, since it's finished? Not yet. You want to get her to see that. <laughs> that I went last year with a group of veterans, and that is fantastic. Uh -huh. It is so beautiful. But I, I agree with you. The Korean uh, Memorial, even more so than the Vietnam Memorial, yes. although that is so beautiful is. and it's so different, you know, with all the names on there and yeah. oh my gosh, and all the tributes that are paid there. But to see those. Yeah, I had been on a tour with my sister. My sister, after her husband died, she decided that she would, for my birthday, she, we'd go on a tour, bus right. tour with AAA. And we had been to Washington right. at night. And I saw, of course, the Lincoln Memorial lit up and the Vietnam Memorial. And we had gone to the botanical gardens. Yes. And of course, then when my daughter took me, I got to see it during the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I say, to me, <coughs> the Korean memorial is the most breathtaking. Oh, it is. It, the, the, the depiction of those soldiers. Yes. <clears throat> the different, the radio man and the rifleman and the, you know, and you could tell in that desperate Korean winter yes. setting and everything. Oh. It is, it's just amazing. Well, you, I hope you get to see the World War II Memorial. It, I hope I last. <laughs> well, it, it's, I know, it's, uh, <laughs> but it is, it's, it's really worth making an effort to go. And that reminds me, we do have, there's an organization called Honor Flight. I've heard about it. Have you heard about Honor oh, Flight? Yeah. Okay, well, I went on that last year, and it is, it is just marvelous. And uh, if you don't have a connection to that, I, I do. Uh -huh. And I'll be happy to give you that. Uh, I'll have I them. think it would be too strenuous for me. Well... You know, I thought at the same time when I went, I thought, gee whiz, I wonder, because so many, so many of the fellows that I knew were going were in wheelchairs, you know, every day, all yeah. day long. And I thought, how can, they, how can they do that? Well, they do that so beautifully on that honor flight. And we had 33 veterans aboard and 20 of whom had to be wheelchair carried. Well, they took care of them. I mean, it was just amazing. Uh -huh. And if you know, if you need any special help or service like that, they know how to do it, and they can make you very comfortable. It's a long day. Yes. You go early in the morning. You get back late at night, but it really is worth it. And I yeah. hope you get a chance to do that, Helen. I I just can't thank you enough for your coming in and doing this. And we're, Thank you, sir. We're so honored to hear your story <laughs> and your wonderful... After Dennis was out to our unit and explained it to us. Oh, good for Dennis. One of the ladies, she's our vice president, she called me and she said, Helen? I said, yeah, Marge, what's on your mind? <laughs> she said, I want you to go down to the, <laughs> to the library. And I said, I've already made an appointment. She <laughs> said, thank you. you. Good for you. <laughs> well, now there ought to be other ladies that should well, do the same thing. Uh, this past Saturday, I talked to two of them. And uh, they are very different types of, the one of them worked on uh, assembling parachutes. Oh my gosh, parachute rigger. Yes. Yeah. And I thought that was so fascinating. Well, it is. Yes. We ought to get her story. And uh, she's a maiden lady. 
Uh -huh. And, uh, but she's, <laughs> she's one of these bustling types of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay, we can handle it. <laughs> I don't know whether she could sit still long enough to do an <laughs> interview. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, you know, there are so many stories. There yes. are so many that we need to get on record. And of course, some people are very reluctant. Right. But uh, it is, uh, I, I, think, I think, I hope you feel it has been an easy process. I, and you can recommend it now, see, yes. you've had the experience. Right. <laughs> you can <laughs> tell other people, pass the word. You're right. <laughs> I had recommended this when, they, when I first heard about it to one of the other <coughs> members of our group who recently has been mm -hmm. uh, diagnosed as dementia. Oh dear. So I don't think she could do it. Well, but, uh, I can assure you that on her flight, they are so practiced because there is, there is a, a caretaker for every person aboard. Yeah. And they really do it right. And they, they, they have food for you, you know, and it doesn't cost a nickel. It's just amazing. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, that's a... Well, there are two different honor flights that I've heard of. Yes. <coughs> well, we have one out, out of Dayton, and we have one out of Cincinnati that goes, that, uh, goes down to Louisville. Mm -hmm. And we're working on getting our, <laughs> our local international airport across the river here to take part in that, so we don't have to bus everybody to yeah. Louisville. But nevertheless, it is very worthwhile. Thank you again, Helen. It's just well, been an you, honor sir. for me and, and for the library, and I know Dennis has <coughs> enjoyed it. And nice to have your daughter here and uh, on a beautiful day in good old River City. So uh, we wish you well. Thank you. Godspeed, and thank you again so much. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.